Valentino's even these shoes, gangster shoes. Thug Black, when he started talking about Thug Black. What do you mean, Thug Black? When you talking about snatching somebody's profit? Well, I ain't talking about no fucking snatch. Well, what are you talking about? I'm talking about Thug. Tupac. What is Thug? I'm in jail with a bunch of these no good motherfuckers. Is this Thug Black? Experience has a lot of lessons for what's getting ready to happen now. And particularly, what role, if any, did they play in the common intelligence program? Were they manipulated for the purposes of creating an internal contradiction to keep the young from thinking about their struggle? I mean, those are questions that's got to be asked. Whether or not the hip hop culture is an enemy of the American culture. And so recently when he got arrested and he's charged with murder, I'm kind of wondering like how you guys react to seeing this. It feels like we're back in the 90s. It's weird that this is happening in 2015. Yeah, it was weird, it was weird how. I thought it was weird how, right? Yeah. Like you run the car, you run him over in the car. Oh shit, that's some next level shit it now. Is what you the most. Yeah, yeah, like I, I was like, what happened? I remember the time, actually it's funny because he showed up to the in the club video shoot. He came. It was like shoes outside. Shoes outside. Everybody like pshh, pshh, pshh. He was running, dropping shit. Pshh. Light man. Everybody going. Pow. I'm in front of the camera like this. Shoes in Running. It was just gone. All right. So people are like genuinely. Yeah. Now it, it kind of changed a little bit. Like was somebody from the barbershop like punch you and knock you out after that? Like you be knocked out like from the guy from the barbershop do that? It changed, and they'd be like, Shug's outside, and everybody be like, yeah? What do you want? <laughs> it changes a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, Greg the Knockout Kid did get famous off that one. I don't know his name. You yeah, know that was name? Greg, he was Greg the Knockout Kid. I think that's his name. He got famous. He was famous for a couple of weeks. <laughs> he just got famous Shug. now. He famous now. He said famous for a couple of weeks. He knocked out Shug, man. He got famous. New and bringing back the West Coast. Hold on, what's that on? They ain't gonna you here. He got, he got hey, to take it out. Yeah, take that back off. Yeah, take Look at this shit. Y'all mean? You this how we do it. West, West bound. Boy, Coca, man, you the only one fighting 50 back, man. What's good with that, man? I don't understand because I, I, the nigga never shot a fair one with nobody in his life. Never, or he been a stabbed and shot and ratted, and I don't understand. I don't understand. That just that just tells you how the rest of the industry is. You know what I mean? So it is what it is with me, pussy. It is what it. I told him over ten thousand times. Tell me where, my nigga. We go just we we can end this all, man. We just can knuckle up. I hear him on his mixtape. Oh, this fat nigga want to fight. Fuck that nigga. That, Nigga, you pussy, you know I you know I know you pussy, man. That's what it is, man. It is what it is, man. He pussy, I know he pussy. I was standing right there, had nothing to do with me. He can't take it back. I was standing in the vibe awards. I watched the little nigga punch Dr. Dre in the face. And I watched 50 and all them niggas run, man. They seen Suge Knight stand up and they all ran and them niggas never came back. They can't take that back, man. They can't I was standing right there, man. I witnessed the shit, had nothing to do with me. I'm sitting right here, these niggas ran. I'm like, oh my God, these niggas is pussy. Even though I've been knew them niggas is pussy, they have been pussy, man. But where they at? Nigga, this is Project Texture right here, man. I keep trying to tell y'all niggas, man. Where they at? This is what I'm talking about, man. Joey Crack, man. Do you think 50 Cent the Ja Rule you, man? And why ja Rule can't me? Be? Yeah. You gotta be fucked. Discretion TV, 21 Gun Salute, yeah, zero capo status. Respectfully, check him back in. It seems like everything Suge Knight built from the ground up has been taken away from him one way or another through his ops, through Jimmy Iovine, David Kenner, etc., etc. Let's dig a little deeper. Now, we know Suge helped Snoop Dogg with that murder case through David Kenner and the Crooked Rampart. Because without David Kenner and them Crooked Rampart LAPD cops that misplaced the evidence out the evidence room, bro, Snoop Dogg would not be in our motherfucking faces right now as the dirty dog he is, as the Snoop Freud he is. Let's dig a little deeper. 
It seems this rivalry between 50 and Suge is just way out of motherfucking hand now. And I'm not mad at nobody. Get your chips, get your bags. But isn't it odd that everything Suge Knight built, all the ideas, everything he pushed, one way or another, that doucheface David Kenner, Jimmy Iovine, Snoop Fraud, they got their hands in it. Snoop Dogg didn't even pull the motherfucking trigger. And that's the whole shit with this whole... Snoop got a lot of people fooled. You know, Snoop had a lot of people fooled in the community until you dig a little deeper in the case. A lot of people say, oh, Snoop even had Pac supporting him. And he ain't pulled the motherfucking trigger. Drop a comment below, let me know. Hit the bell in your heart and motherfucking tell. See you on the next one. Peace. You gotta remember one thing. Interscope was a couple of weeks ago in bankrupt before they met me. Interscope wanted my artists. I said, hey, I gotta own the masters. We gotta own the masters. They said, how you know about that? I said, I know the business. We're not gonna be the one doing all the work and y'all get all the money and own it. It's not gonna happen. Modern day slavery, no different. I always felt that David Kenner was, um, for David Kenner. It has been my personal pleasure to work on a daily basis with a shoot night. David Kenner was the shadow who was always at death row. He was the one who was making deals. David Kenner was running it from the start. He was always there. He's a very, very thorough lawyer. He really knows his business. But I wouldn't say that he's a righteous person. When I left death row, David Kenner took my job at an astronomical salary. From a business standpoint, he was, uh, he was ruthless. David Kenner was so valuable to death row because he was able to keep these artists out of jail. That could be used either way. Exactly. Michael Carlin claims that the proof of how much power David Kenner wielded at Death Row Records was how he was able to get Snoop Dogg off on a murder rap. One of the first things that happens is Snoop is on trial for murder. In this murder, the evidence against Snoop is sitting over at Pacific Division at LAPD. And you have David Kenner at the trial who's making a big deal about this evidence. And LAPD comes back and says, um, they can't find the evidence because it is missing. Wow, that, that's pretty explosive. All of a sudden, Snoop is acquitted. One of the things that puzzles me is how Kenna was able to help Snoop beat that murder rap. Yet, Suge Knight ends up with a nine-year prison sentence over a parole violation. Why wasn't his attorney, Kenna, able to help him beat that? Was it because it was to his advantage not to? I want you to keep this in mind. That incident at the MGM, that altercation, there was no police report filed on that. Hmm. Not one. Orlando Anderson wasn't taken downtown. The only person who suffered because of that MGM footage was Suge Knight. Suge Knight went to jail for a probation violation. If you yeah, cannot yeah. separate the man from the money, separate the, the money, money from the man. man. It doesn't matter if you're mainstream, hardcore rap, or R&B. It doesn't matter what. We can all be in the same position at any given time. And they show it to us at every instance. They show you that. They will snatch you up out of your career, out of your good life, and put you on court and make you fight for your life. I'm going to the studio to make Bob Doe mad. I'm finna go make Bob. I'm finna make you real mad right now. You with Dolores Tucker. I'm finna make a hit for y'all right now. Call. We love Snoop. F all y'all. You see that judge? I didn't curse. Probation people, I did not curse. Forgive my props. <laughs> Let me stay free. We ain't mad at the whole spot in New York. We just mad at certain people. Now that his trial is over, he's finally able to speak his mind about the feelings and emotions he had during this long case. Make sure y'all get my death row symbol. 
Civilization of greatness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pull yours out, DK. <laughs> I couldn't wear it through court. I had to keep it up under my tie. Now court is over. We, the jury in above entitled action, find the defendant, Calvin Brodus, not guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree. I'm curious, what was going through your mind at the time that the jury was reading the verdict? I left it in God's hand, Abby. That's why I looked at so stone-faced. I was just, I didn't have no expressions. You know what I'm saying? It was all in her. I prayed on it. My family prayed on it. David Kenner, you know what I'm saying, put on the bomb, bomb case. Donald Ray, Marshall Morris, he Paul Palladino, the whole dream team. They did what they were supposed to do when they gave the baton to the jury, and I couldn't do nothing but just bank on them and worry about what the outcome was going to be as far as to just sit there and, and hold my position and, and keep my head up high and just, you know, wait for the outcome. Right. Um, when you talk about the dream team, it's interesting because obviously after OJ, um, you know, the, the price of uh, having a team like that is, is certainly not what the average person and certainly not what the average black American male can afford. Do you feel that there is a price on justice? Would you have gotten the same type of, um, you know, defense team if you were not in the rap game like you are making money like you are now? I mean, only if David Kennedy just would have had love for me on that level and just did it for me, just not for the paper, but just doing it for the love, because I know that's how he is about me. He, he's not concerned with the money issue, and you know what I'm saying? And I knew that when he did his closing argument, you know what I'm saying? Because it brought him to tears, it brought me to tears and a couple of jurors to, to tears because he was actually telling them, I'm not representing Snoop Doggy Dog for Snoop Doggy Dog. I'm representing him because I love him as an individual. I knew him before this incident, I know him after this incident, and I'm giving y'all control of his life in which I've had control over for the past two and a half years. And I love this man. If you take him away, it's like you taking me away. Right, but and is there is there a price tag though? You know injustice? what's happening, you know it's a price tag. People like. Ed Nissen and Bobby Grace, they eat up uh, defendants that don't have no money, that don't have no stability to fight the case because they so dirty with what they do. They so undermine and they find out that uh, victims have guns on them and they throw that out the idea, do interviews with you. No, he didn't have a gun. Then come back two months later, oh yeah, he had a gun, but he wasn't going for it. Then they come back four months, yeah, he was going for a gun, but he was only going for it after McKinley Lee went for it. So that, that lets you know the obstruction to the law. And I, I just want to tell them, all them pennies you put on the table, they mounted up to nothing, Bobby Grace, nothing. Uncle Tom's nephew, from me to you. But do you feel he was doing his job? No, he wasn't doing his job. If he was doing his job, he would have called the case off. That's doing your job. Seek justice. He knew we was not guilty. He knew that. He knew McKinley Lee acted in self-defense. McKinley Lee has never, ever, ever, ever been involved with gangs. I have. McKinley Nee has never been involved with gangs. He was the trigger man. So what, what's the whole case about? Oh, it's about Snoop Dogg being gang affiliated? But Snoop Dogg didn't pull the trigger. He drove the car away from his bodyguard acting in self-defense. But if you look at them, they don't care about that. It's Snoop Dogg. We some low-life district attorneys that don't have no name, that don't got nothing going for ourselves. If we wash him up, we large. We bigger than Chris Darden and Marsh and Clark and all them. We going to be large. That's what his whole mission was about. He wasn't focused on the case. All he was focused on was washing me up. I remember when um, we talked to Malik, or McKinley Lee, he had mentioned that this case was really more so about him and that the actions that he took in his job. How do you feel that the action that he did take to protect your life resulted in the death of another young man? I mean, I feel bad, you know what I'm saying? But yet and still, he did, Malik done his job. His job was to protect me, protect him and anybody that was around me at any time. That's what he was hired for as a personal bodyguard. That's what bodyguards are hired for. If you go get at Garth Brooks, Kenny Rogers, any one of them, and ask them, what is your bodyguard's job? Did you guys see the, the movie The Bodyguard with Whitney Houston? What was Kevin Costner's job? To protect Whitney Houston from any danger that came to her while she was performing, even while she wasn't performing. And as you've seen, the movie projected everything that could happen to you as a celebrity. But it really didn't go in depth as far as our situation. But it, it gave it across as, as clear as possible as they could. But if we was to do a movie called The Bodyguard, it'd be so similar to that. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about lifestyle for a minute, because did the danger come to you, or were you always around this danger because of the environment that you were living in at that time? No. I mean, the danger came to us. We, we perceived it as a threat. That's the reason why Malik acted the way he acted in the situation. You know, I look at it like this. If Malik would have waited another second, 
I might not be here doing an interview with you right now. If he would have waited another half a second, I might have a hole in my head. He might have a hole in his head. He might have a hole in his arm. You never know. Much of a hit, but Tupac, with his unforgettable big brown eyes and his radiant natural charm, definitely was. By March of 1990... Because just a few hours ago, Snoop uh, arrived at the Los Angeles County Courthouse where he was standing trial for murder, and Jazz went there to see if she could catch up with him. Have a look. It's Friday morning in Los Angeles, and I'm outside the criminal courts building where the trial that's set to get America talking even more than O.J. Simpson's is just about to begin. 23-year-old Calvin Brodus, a.k.a. Snoop Doggy Dog, the man who made gangster rap mainstream, stands accused of murder. His first album, Doggy Style, boasted two million in advanced orders. It sold out as soon as it hit the shops and was the first album to enter the U.S. charts at number one. Like many rappers, Snoop's sales success has gone hand in hand with his brushes with the law. Also on Rap Row is Snoop's own producer, Dr. Dre, sentenced to house arrest following charges of battery and Tupac Shakur awaiting trial for the alleged shooting of two off-duty cops and for sexual assault. Snoop's accused of the murder of 25-year-old Philip Walder Merriam, who was shot in a gangland shootout in West LA. Snoop claims it was self-defense. However, Snoop's lawyer does admit that McKinley Lee, Snoop's bodyguard, did shoot the bullet and Snoop was driving the car. Under American law, Snoop could face 15 years to life imprisonment. Mysteriously, whilst awaiting trial, Snoop appeared in a slickly produced 18-minute film. Murder was the case, showing him involved in a shooting in which he returns fire on his assailants in self-defense. His record company told us yesterday that the film bears no relation to any real events. With yet another black male celebrity in the dock, it's the case that's got America talking. Here ain't nobody gonna get off, because they just want, they want to put everybody in jail instead of, you know, trying to do something. As soon as we get to trial, uh, this case will be shown to be what it is, which was a case of uh, Snoop's bodyguard having to defend him and uh, shooting somebody in self-defense. Since his breakthrough onto the music scene, Snoop has been continually surrounded by controversy over the explicit nature of his rap. Guess who's back in the motherfucking house with a fat dick for your motherfucking mouth? Holes recognize, niggas do too, because when bitches get scandalous and pull a voodoo, what you gonna do? Accused of glamorizing crime, Snoop's album Doggy Style contained 70 references to guns and killing. I'm bringing it to you in the rap form so you don't have to go out there and do it in the reality form because I'm explaining to you what's gonna happen to you and what can happen to you. So hopefully you'll pay attention to my music and stop the violence and get your groove on rather than get your blast on. So after years of cultivating a gangster image and rapping about gang crime, Snoop now has to prove that he's no gangster. We're gonna take our business in the courtroom and make sure everything is all right and keep doing our music. But I mean, as far as I can say, just stay supportive to me and the things that I do as far as making my music and staying true to me. Things kind of calm down downstairs and you guys all jump in the Jeep mm -hmm. and head to the studio. Right. It was you, Snoop, and Sean Abrams. Mm -hmm. But then, on your way to the studio, you guys realize you forgot something. No, no, no. See, I'll be honest that's with you. That's not right? No, it's, 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 that's, that's right. But it was, it was Das's fault. Let me tell you why. Because we had to... No, I'm being real. <laughs> okay. At that time, back then, we were recording on a... Uh, it was called a DAP player. <laughs> right? And we had to have the DAP player. We would bring our, the DAP player to record the music on the DAP. Mm -hmm. Right? And then bring the DAP back. So we always have the music with us. Right? So we, at that time we forgot the DAP player because, you know, Daz and they had already left. So we had to go, had to come back and get the DAP player. That's why we came back. Right. So, and that's when, unfortunately, is when the situation happened. Okay. So you guys turn back around. Yeah. You go back to the apartment. Did you guys make it back to the apartment? No. no. Aha. So you're no. coming back to the apartment to yeah. get the DAP player. And then things start to happen. Yeah. So, so break down the events. Well, you know, on the way back, we're going down the street and, we, we see this guy like in the middle of the street, you know, it's just kind of like waving us down, flagging us down, you know, and it was, it was kind of strange to me, but I noticed, I noticed who it was. I know it was, it was one of the guys that was in the front seat, you know, and he's waving us over. So we kind of pull over, Snoop pulls over and I'm thinking, okay, this could possibly be a situation. So I set my gun on my lap. He goes over off the sidewalk now and he's kind of standing up by some bushes and I do remember him saying, hey, man, you know, hey, don't we sorry. We know who you are. You know, my boy, he just be tripping sometimes, man. You know, my fault. He, I, don't even, I, I still remember him saying something about medication. You know, I don't, I don't think he took his medicine. I still kind of vaguely remember that because I think about this a lot of times. And, you know, to make a long story short, not to, you know, he, uh, he, um, <laughs> 
Give me a second, man. Yeah, take your time. He, he just said, man, I just, my boy, he tripping sometimes, man. We sorry, we sorry. Next thing we know, we saw who we know now, the deceased, try to run at us and the guy grabbed him, he pushed him. And when he pushed him, he reached. And when he reached, that's when I fired. Okay, so you're talking to this one guy in the street who's saying that his friend is tripping, I guess, the friend, uh, Phil, Philip uh, Waldemarium, I guess was diabetic. That's what yeah. That's what, what came out later. And he hadn't taken his medication and not having your medication and food or whatever makes you agitated and so forth. So he was trying to explain to you like, okay, this guy, Philip is tripping. And I guess the guy, Philip's AKA is a little smooth, mm. which, which came out later. So he's, he's trying to basically saying, basically apologizing for what happened downstairs. And then Philip comes out of the bushes. So from your point of view, was the guy that was talking to you trying to set you guys up or was he, sincerely apologizing no, no, no. and not knowing this guy was in the bushes. I think it was, I think it was sincere, man. I, I really do. I, I mean, I do. I think it was sincere, you know, um, because of how he was saying, it, you know, his demeanor, yeah. you know, but then, you know, when I think about it, I see him backing up, you know, then again, why would he be backing up towards the bushes? You know, why, you know, all those things I think about now, you know what I'm saying? But in the honesty, I think he was trying to be sincere about it. And then when, when you know, Philip came out of the bushes and he grabbed him and he reached, I mean, there was no, I had no other alternative. So Philip comes out of the bushes. Snoop is in the driver's seat. Yeah. Sean is in the back seat. Yeah. Daz? No, it was just Sean. It was only those three. So, so da Daz? Daz, they had, Daz they, not there. They had already gone. Okay, got it. Gone. Okay. So the three of you are in this Jeep. This guy's backing up and then Philip comes out the bushes. And you say he grabbed somebody or? No, 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 no. No, he was when uh, the guy had tried to grab Phil. Oh, the guy was to, actually he, trying he to push him and then reached. Oh, so it really sounds like the guy was really trying to deescalate everything. Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't trying to set you guys up or or put you guys in a bad space because yeah. he would have grabbed Phil if that was the case. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Okay. So he tried to grab Phil, mm -hmm. and by this time you already had your gun on your lap. Yeah, ready. And this was uh, you had a license to carry. This was a legal gun. This was not and some... the police never asked for the gun, never wanted the gun. I mean, there's so many things yeah. that I won't get into, man, that didn't even make sense to me. Okay, so he comes out of the he comes out of the bushes, and then you see him reaching for the gun. Yeah. I say no. I saw him attempt to reach for the gun. Attempt to reach for the gun. Yes. Big difference. Did he like lift his shirt up or Yeah. He Aha. Uh -huh. What went through your mind at that point? I just reacted. It was it was reactive. Yeah, it was reactive. You don't have time to you don't have time to think about that, you know. Not at all. There wasn't any opportunity for me to think because I already knew there was a possible situation anyway because of what had just happened, and I saw the same guy, so I already knew that there was a possibility that something could happen. At that point, had you ever shot your gun before? No. Okay, just the the shooting range. Not at anybody. Not at anybody. So this was a completely new territory for you. So you pulled out your gun. And you empty the clip? No. Fired six times. Exactly. Six I times. I remember. Fired six shots. Now, there was some controversy over these six shots mm -hmm. because the prosecution later on tried to say that he got shot in the back. Mm -hmm. But from your point of view, that's not what happened at all. No, it's not. It so explain. Well, the trajectory of how he was shot was exactly consistent with everything that I told him. He turned. And as he was turning... That's when he got shot in his hip and he got shot in his upper back as he was turning. So from the angle of where I was at, it was on a hill. So he was running up a small hill. And so what I wanted to do, I was trying to hit him in the extreme, the lower extreme of his body. And so when I'm firing, I fired up, bam, 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 like this. So that hit him. I was aiming to hit him in the leg area, lower part of his body. But as he saw me, he turned. And when he turned and ran, he got hit in his hip. As he still turned and went through his back, exactly how I said, because I saw the bullets like the Matrix. Yeah. Saw his shirt fly up. I saw everything. After the sixth shot, did you think he was dead? No, I didn't know. I saw him run. Okay, he was still running? Okay, and at that point, 
Snoop hit the gas and he took off. He was out. He, took he was off. out. Oh. Uh, Valentino giving these suits gangsters.